This is Two Chicks Talking Flicks, where we review movies, love them or hate them, someone's gotta do it. So, enjoy the show. Hi, I'm Sarah. And I'm April. And this is Two Chicks Talking Flicks. And anything else that gets in the mix. So, April. Yeah. It is baseball season. It is. It is. And uh, we got an opportunity to go to the baseball game. Hell yeah. The World Series champion, Mm -hmm. Texas Rangers. Of course. With or against or defeating, spoiler alert, (laughs) our hated rivals from the South. I wouldn't say that. Well, okay. If you're a Ranger fan, they are our hated rivals to the South. The Astros. Mm. Um, But we had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And um, because we were going to that, I thought, hey, we should do a baseball movie. And there is no perfect movie other than The Rookie Mm. that we could talk about because it was filmed here at our own ballpark. The old one. The old, the old ballpark. The old Arlington ballpark. Um. Had you been to games there? Yeah. <laughs> Other people don't know. I oh. know. They don't know. Okay. I was like, duh, we just had this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've been to the old ballpark. I, n- I was not to the, or- I've never been to the original ballpark or the 90s or 80s. Like I- the ballpark before this one, I had not been to. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, basically in the same like location it just you know it was a little more north of the ballpark um that i was remember the, seeing it yeah that was the old old stadium and uh, my mom and her family had been there mm. um but i never got a chance to go there either uh this one that's in the movie was opened in 1994 mm-hmm. now this year we are going to be having the um, All-Star Game here. Oh, we are. Yeah. That's like, what, July, right? Yeah, because um, our ballpark opened in 2020, mm-hmm. and we finally got to have the All-Star Game, which is perfect because we just won the World Series. And whoever, whatever um, manager or team won, that manager gets to be the American League host. No, um, coach. So our manager is going to be the coach anyways. And we had so many players last year. So I'm sure we'll have even more players this year. And it's in our own ballpark. Home advantage. Exactly. Right. Um, and yeah, it's the American league um, this year. So all, all things are coming up Ranger. Yay. And so this is a perfect time to review this movie. Mm-hmm. For those of you who don't know the story, uh, do you want to give like just a 30 second overview of the movie? Okay. A never been has been. (laughs) Never quite washed up. Never had a real shot at it. Finally takes a shot at the big leagues. And, you know, it's a rags to riches story (laughs) for a mid-crisis 40, 30-something-year-old guy. Yeah. Pitcher. (laughs) <laughs> well, so as a kid, he loved baseball, mm-hmm. um, but they moved around so much. And then they moved to this tiny town in Texas where they didn't really play baseball. Mm-hmm. So he didn't really get an opportunity to play because it's, you know, Texas. It's all about football, football, football. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, I mean, it was just a bad town for baseball, yeah. you know, because I wouldn't say that for every place. Oh, no, 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 no. You know, yeah. But they were just in a very tiny town in West mm-hmm. Texas. Um, and then he goes to college, he got drafted by the Brewers, Mm -hmm. but he hurt his arm Mm -hmm. and, uh, couldn't play. And so I would say that injury wound up his arm. Yeah. (laughs) Tighten it. Right. Hey, the (laughs) other rookie movie, that's what happened, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Rowan Gardner, he, he's able to throw so far, so fast because of his, uh, weird arm after an accident. Mm -hmm. Uh, But he had had several surgeries and then decided to become a teacher. And uh, he's just working as a teacher. I mean, at least he didn't, he was a chemistry teacher. At least he didn't turn to meth. (laughs) (laughs) We're looking at you, Breaking Bad. (laughs) 
I mean, we don't know his life. You know, they were, I mean, it was either baseball, you know, was his midlife crisis or it was going to be a meth kingpin. I just love that going to Fort Worth to be a teacher was like their saving grace. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. It's all about the big show in Fort Worth. <laughs> and the way she was talking about it. Especially since they were past, they were in West Texas. Yeah. I can't, it was Great Lakes or something was the town, even though I, no, I, I believe you said it was a made up town, right? No, it's a real town, but where they were actually from, I think was called something different. Oh, okay. But either way, it's like the next biggest town was San Angelo. And I'm like, San Angelo is pretty big. Yeah. But then I guess I'm thinking about now San Angelo, not yeah. 90s San Angelo, because 90s Fort Worth is kind of small compared to what they are now. Yeah. So. I just love that that was like the big thing. It's not like they were going that to Highland Park. That was the big Park. city. Yeah. Like they could be going to Plano. They could be going to Frisco. Like those are bigger, not as big as Fort Worth. But mm-hmm. if you were looking for prestige, um, you know, those are like the baseball town. Like, I, I feel like Fort Worth 90s. They didn't even have half a million, I don't think. <laughs> like, I grew up in Fort Worth. It wasn't that big. so. Or maybe it's just because you're looking at it from where you were in Fort Worth. But Fort Worth is, I mean, it's a big city. It's big, but it. I feel now it's definitely built up and people are coming in from the suburbs. Mm. You know, I think that's another reason why it's being gentrified. Yeah. So... Um, so him and his wife work as teachers or work at the same school. I don't know what she does, actually. I feel like she's the one that grabbed him. So, well, yeah. <laughs> Sexually <laughs> harassed so. her husband. Um, I like oh. how he's like, don't don't tell that to HR. And she goes, I never do. <laughs> oh, also, I feel like a big thing that was missing in this story is that nobody really addressed the neglected baby. Right. <laughs> They did have a neglectful baby. Like, they should have just left the baby out of the storyline. Yeah, I've never understood that. Like, shows that have babies and they don't ever, like, have the baby with them. Yeah. They just, like, go places. I'm like, where's your kid? Yeah. Like, uh, you can't... The only true rendition of this story is that when the wife runs out to run errands, he secretly goes to, like, this try out scouting thing yeah. right and he has to take all the kids because he has to watch the kids yeah that was the only believable thing is when you have to take your kids with you everywhere yeah and they're inconvenient to you <laughs> so yeah yeah it was just, i've just never understood of why people put babies into plots of things and then they they only want them there for the cuteness for I the guess. familiness not for what was it? I saw this TikTok. Apparently, oh gosh, I don't know what his name. Somebody a somebody right has a song about like you're gonna miss these days. You know when your kids are little, yeah. And then they just show videos of these you know kids screaming and kicking. <laughs> and so I watched a few of those, and it was funny. That is funny. Um, so the old ballpark. I miss it. I it love. Is. I do love the new ballpark mainly because when it's June and I want to go to a game, it's air conditioning mm-hmm. and that's nice. Yeah, because it's too fucking hot here in Texas to just be sitting outside baking in the sun. Uh, I've been to a many a game during the summer and it's just miserable, absolutely miserable. Bugs alone make it miserable. Interesting. So I, this is my first time going to Global Life. Yeah. Like I haven't been to it. And um, I kind of, I I feel like, first of all, I don't like where we were sitting. Yeah. Like yeah. that's not my, it's, it's funny. Like when once we sat there, I'm like, this isn't my usual spot. You yeah. Know? No. <laughs> I've sat in different places and I've already found like, obviously the good seats, you know, you don't complain about those, but like everyday seats, it's like, this isn't my side. <laughs> yeah. I always liked the first base side. So that's why we kind of tried to stick with that, but it was just really hard to get seats where I wanted to. Mm-hmm. Um, see, I'm used to third base. Oh, uh, see, yeah, we never stayed. Like, that's not I'm the home. Across. 
Uh, well, I don't care about that. I get a better view of the fireworks. Well, there is that. And uh, those scared the crap out of me every time they went off because I, I wasn't expecting it. I was like, I can't see them from here. <laughs> now, they did have the roof open. Yeah, I was very happy about the roof being open because I wanted to experience that. I don't feel they opened enough. <laughs> I mean, it was completely open. I know. I, I think why the problem that you had is because I was under the TV screen. Yeah. Yeah. So it didn't look like it was open, but it was fully open. Mm. Um, I could see that it was open. I just, that overhang. Yeah. I didn't like that side. Um, so I've been to lots of games at, well, I've been to a handful of games at the new ballpark, Mm -hmm. but I went to so many games at the old ballpark and I, I cried the last game that we were there that it was open um i was at that game i was at the ceremony where they took the home plate over to the new ballpark where where it was going to be mm-hmm. and um you know i i miss going there just because it's a really pretty park mm-hmm. um april in that park great mm-hmm. anytime after that sucked until like september time comes around um I always sat in basically essentially where we were yesterday, but a little far further to the left mm-hmm. is kind of where we sat a lot. Um, and I really enjoyed being out there. Ugh, uh, I think the worst seats I've ever had was actually towards the bottom by third base, mm-hmm. like kind of like in the outfield, like that area yeah. when it was like, it was a, I don't know, a three o'clock in the afternoon oh, game God. and the sun was hitting yes. and I was like, oh no, I'm never sitting over here. Yeah. But it's yeah. one of those things like until you sit around in different areas, you don't, you, you, you have to f- remember these things. Yeah. It's like, nope, I'm never coming on this end. That's why anytime during the afternoon to evening, I always sit on the first base side because it's always in the shade. Mm. I never sit over in... um the outfield because I know it's going to be in the sun. Well, I like sitting like third base. Well, no, like home. What is it? Home to third base, like that area. But I, I actually like sitting in the nosebleed seats because you go all the way to the top and you get a nice gush of like air. Mm -hmm. So I always loved it back there. I always liked the second concourse just because I felt like you weren't so close, but you weren't so far away. Um, at this ballpark, at the new one, you're supposed to feel like you're in the game no matter where you're sitting. Yeah, it doesn't feel like these seats went that high up. Yeah. Like it, it, the the upper row didn't feel that high. No, I actually felt closer when we were higher than I did when we were lower. Mm. I did not like sitting in those seats. Mm. So <laughs> normally, I would have expected that seat to have a little bit more space. Leg right. Room. Yeah. yeah. So I'm almost 5'10". I'm 5'9", 5'10". Mm-hmm. In shoes, I'm probably 5'10". And uh, I have long legs. I'm mostly leg, not a much torso. I'm leg and arm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had no room at all. And um, I just felt like a stuffed sausage sitting in that seat. Mm-hmm. And I had no problem really going down to our seat. Mm-hmm. But trying to go up the the stairs they were very steep and um not as bad as the cowboy stadium but they were nearly as bad it's a very in, inclined and uh, i had to hold on to the railing just to like pull myself up i didn't like that the railing was not round mm, it was weird. flat it was full yeah I, there, there's not a lot of space i feel like the old stairs at the old ballpark there was more space base on the stairs like i guess because they didn't have railings in between as much no, they did did they yeah it just seemed like there was bigger stair area mm. um that felt really small to me but because like each person kind of had their own side um so that was weird but when we moved up mm-hmm. and we sat in that other section i liked it so much more because mm-hmm. <laughs> it felt more comfortable and uh another thing is is I noticed when you were standing and leaning on the rail, I didn't like that the rail tilted out. It should have tilted in because then when you leaned on it, it would have I feel like it would have been more comfortable. Yeah. 
but I don't know. You leaned on it. Do you have any recollection? So the one where we were first sitting, Mm -hmm. it's up high enough that it, that didn't bother me Mm. at all. Um, the one where we were sitting secondly, Mm -hmm. I felt like it wasn't tall enough. Mm. I felt like I could have easily fallen over if I didn't have my balance with me. Mm. Um, so that's a problem. Better fix it, globe life. Don't want anybody to hurt yeah, themselves. I, I think it's too late for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, so old ballpark. Um, they had theirs higher than what they actually need to be. Mm-hmm. And after the um a few people had fallen over the railings for different reasons, they actually raised them even higher. Oh my god, that's so dumb. Yeah. That's not fair. Well, so I know two of them were someone doing something stupid Mm -hmm. after drinking and whatnot. So they should be sued. The third person was just with his son, and he actually died. The other two didn't die. So, you know. The moral of the story is don't reach out to grab balls. They're not that important. Your life is more important than reaching. I just I to feel like the whole you know don't sleep with the hair dryer blowing type. Who does that? I know oh, people do, but like, uh, I hate that we have to. First of all, no one's reading hair dryer directions. No. Like it's not happening. I'm sorry. It's pretty. Dr- Second self- of all, the person that reads it automatically is not going to be doing that, you yeah. know? So yeah, it's, it's pointless. Yeah. You know, like you order a hot coffee. If your mouth gets burned, that's on you. Mm. Now, if the lid comes off and it burns you, that's a completely different story. But you know, you ordered a hot coffee, expect it to be hot. Uh, in defense of the McDonald's lady. Oh, that's what I'm saying. The, her lid wasn't on correctly and it spilled on her. That's completely different. No. Do you have, a, like, I actually saw a thing, like, the degrees that this coffee was at yeah. was astronomical. I know. I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going against her. She's perfectly fine. I was talking about just regular normal people. If they get their coffee and it's like super duper hot and they drink it right away. Yeah, but it wasn't the lid. Like there was other factors in that. Okay. Okay. I'm I'm not mad at her. I'm 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 not going against her. Mm. The coffee was just the first thing that popped in my head. Mm. Uh, Because I know how hot Starbucks coffees can be. And I have burnt the roof of my mouth many a time. Mm. That's on me because I should wait and check the temperature before I just start guzzling. Mm-hmm. Um, what was I going to say? So baseball. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, I, I miss the stadium. Um, I like the feel of the new stadium. I think it's really nice. It's really clean. I don't feel like there's a lot of concession stands. I feel like there's a lot of, Area, like I feel like at the old bar park, there was concession stands almost every single section. You know what? I also noticed nobody came around offering beer or peanuts. There was one beer guy. We got him once that I can remember. All I saw was the guy selling tickets. Yeah, he came around too, but there was there was a beer guy at one point. Mm-hmm. Um, but other than that, yeah, you don't see very many of them anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just... It's different. Like, I don't know if maybe that's how it is at a lot of ballparks now, but I I did notice that. I was like, there's not a lot of concession stands around here. But they can take so many more people at the ones they do have versus how they used to be able to. There was a lot of beer. Like, if you wanted beer, you could easily get beer. (laughs) You know? Beer was everywhere. Yeah. And if you wanted a basic snacks yeah they were readily available yeah. i do hate that all the fancy stuff is basically on the first floor mm. so you have to go you know search in you there have to first. get it where you come in yeah mm-hmm. um 
What's your favorite uh, concession food at the ballpark? Like, let's just say money is not an option or a, a, a problem. You know what? I don't actually have a go-to item. It is A, whatever I'm feeling that day, uh-huh. and and or B, whatever has the shortest line. Like, I don't... I don't have a go-to item. We'll be back after a quick break. Ever wondered what it takes to make it in the movie business? Peel back the curtain with 4-6 Success Filmmaking. 4-6 Success Filmmaking is where filmmakers share their stories and the secrets. It's beyond competitive out there. There have been movies that it's taken me 10 years to get made. Don't wait to create. Like, you've got to just keep making stuff. Tune in to 4-6 Success Filmmaking for your dose of cinematic realness, direct from the voices that have lived it. So yesterday you were just like, oh, I'll take the pretzel, just because... Yeah, I wish the cheese was bigger. Mm. There was, first of all, my little cheese thingy was not full enough. You know, (laughs) I wish I had more cheese. Yeah, Sarah got loaded nachos and they were cold. They were cold. Mm -hmm. And then I got the burger basket and my burger, who knows how long it was sitting there. The fries were pretty warm still, Mm -hmm. but the burger was not. Yeah. It was like, I definitely. I feel like there was this one nacho place where you could see the cheese was steaming yeah. hot. That is where we should, like, we should have gotten our whatever cheese condiments there. Yeah, because those, they make them right then. Yeah. Instead of yeah. them already being ready. Yeah. So now. And I think they were cheaper than the ones Sarah got. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, now we know to go there because I was like, man. I'll definitely. If it's if you want the good food, get it on the first floor. Right. You know, the second floor is for like miscellaneous snacks, mm-hmm. like the popcorn or the pretzel, you know, yeah. but like the good food, get that when you come in. Well, the really good food is in that section I was telling you about. The all you can eat section of oh. fancy all you can eat, not not the general public all you can eat where it's only hot dogs hamburgers sort of situation mm-hmm. uh, but my aunt she had prime rib oh. they had all sorts of stuff and they had desserts and cookies and mm-hmm. beer and i definitely next time i think i'm gonna get nachos from that place downstairs right. and i'm gonna get a smoothie because okay. i was interested in their smoothies they do have an ice cream place i think i want uh, there was some, I was kind of looking at like their concession stands, like a list of it, uh-huh. but they didn't show pictures. And I meant to go back and look at pictures, mm-hmm. like look up pictures of their food. Yeah. But there was one other thing I was interested in. So I can't remember. Well, we'll have to go back again. Mm-hmm. Um, But I enjoyed going there. Uh, The old ballpark when I first, when it first opened, mm-hmm. They used to have a restaurant where, um, so where the outfield is, right? Mm -hmm. That's where they had uh, the all you can eat. But before they had that, it used to actually be a restaurant and it was. Have I been there with you? I think so. Maybe. Yeah. Um, But the restaurant isn't there anymore. Mm. Um, Good God, what restaurant was it? It was something that they have a lot of other places, but it was specifically at this ballpark. Mm. And we'd been there, and they allowed you to eat there even when there is no game. And oh. so we would just go there every once in a while. Um, and you can, like, look over the ballpark and just sit there and eat your food and, like, watch batting practice or whatever might be going on. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that was really cool. Um, but other than that, I can't think of anything that was, like, super unique or fancy to that ballpark. I liked that outdoor balcony that's i think that's why i liked the top Uh because sometimes we would go out there and we would watch like the sun go down Mm -hmm. and it was a really nice view of like cowboy stadium that is true i will say there was lots of times when there'd be like a storm or or something Mm -hmm. and you'd be on the concourse because they would make you leave the stadium area 
and um, just looking out with all those, um, what are those called? Arches. Arches, thank you. <laughs> Archways. It was really pretty looking. Yeah. Um, the new stadium, I will say, during the day, it it's nothing eye-pleasing. Mm-hmm. But at night when it's all lit up and the glass everywhere, it is really a stunning building. Mm-hmm. Um, and I enjoy that. Mm-hmm. But. I had a lot of fun. I, I love going to baseball games. Um, I like trying different areas. We have to try the rocking chairs because they're like giant oversized, huge rocking chairs. Don't know how you can get tickets to those, but we'll figure that out at some point. Yes, yes. So back to this movie. You know what I noticed? Mm-hmm. I didn't see any turkey legs. I don't know if they have that anymore. Not sure. I never ate them before, so I don't know. I enjoy turkey legs, but it's just too much, you mm-hmm. know? Like, I have to be, like, hungry. I feel like I need tortillas. Like, <laughs> like, like just eating the meat yeah. seems like I need more than this. But obviously, this is already too much, yeah. you know? So, yeah. Um. I need a turkey leg to go home. Right. And dress it up. <laughs> you know, so yesterday it was interesting. Uh, I've gone to the shop at the old ballpark, you know, before the game. Mm-hmm. And there it was always pretty busy, mm-hmm. but it never was as busy as yesterday was. Well, that was it insane. was opening day, right? No. No, okay. Still, like, this is... A regional two teams playing yes. against each other. Yes. You know, they are champions. So you still have a lot of people that haven't bought their merch, yeah. you know? Yeah, because this is the second weekend. It's like the second game we've, or set of games we've had and even, at the stadium. Even so. if they're not buying, they want to see that championship merch, yeah. you know? <laughs> they had this really cool necklace. It was like a fake gold chain, mm-hmm. huge oversized chain. And then a big, like, circular ranger ballpark thing, Mm -hmm. moniker on it. It was gaudy, but I kind of wanted it. I almost And now you could see why, if you had gotten it, you would have been on camera. Right? So (laughs) many people had them. Mm -hmm. I liked the T ones better, though. I think those ones looked cooler. Mm -hmm. But I was like, man, those look so fun. Mm -hmm. I don't think Sarah would have sat with me if I had it. I think she'd be like, nah, I'm good. I'm just going to sit over here. <laughs> um, So I find it really interesting that they're trying to get grass to grow on a, like a desert, basically, essentially a desert land. Mm. We have grass in our yard, but there's a lot of places that there aren't grass. Mm-hmm. And it used to be a flooding issue. We got that fixed but we still don't have grass and ours is not nearly as dry as this field. You have no sun, but there are a lot of places where the sun does hit it. I mean, you know, there was grass there before (laughs) and now it's gone. And I'm just thinking it's not deer. We have no deer. So I wonder how they got this grass to, well, obviously in the movie it's because they put hair around and the, and the deer didn't eat the field anymore. But I need someone, any listeners out there who knows anything about grass, let me know how how we can get this situation going. Just buy patches of grass. Yeah, that's expensive. Really? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And actually, our neighbor did that, Mm -hmm. and his all died. So you can see, like, all the regular grass, and then you can see the squares that he put in, and they're all dead. Ah. Well, then don't bother. I know, but it just looks bad. No one's looking at your yard. We are. We look at our yard. Just get the fake putt-putt grass. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I told Susan we should do, and she was like, nah. Uh, probably with pets, I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah, no, it's not a good idea. It's, it's, you can't get it now. <laughs> um, so he decides to throw pitching, or BP, and... um. He lets it rip, and the catcher is like, holy crap. Like, you can actually throw. You're like, yeah, yeah. When I want to. 
I'm sort of fast, whatever. <laughs> and uh, then the next day he comes to throw batting practice because the actual pitcher couldn't find his shoe. And apparently that kid just plays, he just pitches every day, mm. which, you know, I don't think your arm would last if you did that every day. That's why he has to ice it. <laughs> <laughs> I saw no ice in this movie. Mm. Um, and so then all the kids see how f- fast he throws mm-hmm. and uh, they convince him that if they make it to district and win, then he has to go try out. Mm-hmm. And so obviously they make it to district, mm-hmm. they win. And so he goes and he tries out Yeah, and he runs into an old scout who recognized oh. him. And I was just like, how did this dude remember him? Like he had a lot of potential in his youth. Yeah. And uh, so after all the other normal kids leave, <laughs> they mm-hmm. finally uh, have him throw and they just have him keep throwing and keep throwing. And he's hitting like 98 consistently. Mm-hmm. And they were like, well, what did you, how fast did you used to throw? And he was like, oh, I don't know, around like 85, 86. Mm-hmm. They're like, like, what's happening? You shouldn't be getting faster. You're getting old. Yeah, you're too old to play. Yep. <laughs> Which is crazy because he was 39. And yes, in sports terms, that is old. But like mm-hmm. in real life, that's not that old. No, it's ancient. You know, and so it's just like, that's so weird. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that starts his whole career. Especially in the 90s. So that's another thing to consider. Like old is different now you know you have people that take care of themselves yeah you know some food is healthier some food is worse yeah but there's so much more information available that you know if you care about that you can there's google you know you can there's so much information on how to take care of better take care of your body so i feel that now a 39 year old rookie is not unpleasant unbelievable yeah you know like you'd be like oh okay you know life happens and now here's his chance yeah um Dolly's Garcia the guy I pointed out to you yesterday with the fun shoes Mm -hmm. uh he was a 28 year old rookie Mm -hmm. um and look at him now he's doing awesome he just won a uh (laughs) almost won an MVP and he won a ring. So, you know, it can happen. Bling, bling. Whoop, whoop. Um, and, you know, my sister, she's going to be 46 this year. Mm-hmm. He, Dennis Quaid in this movie is 47 in real life. Mm-hmm. He looks way older than my sister does at 46. Mm-hmm. And he's playing a 39-year-old. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, he looks so, like, they got someone who's way older to play someone way younger just so he looks so much older, I guess, than all the kids that are going to be playing just so it looks oh, that big yeah, of a difference. Oh, yeah, okay, that makes sense, yeah. You know what I just realized? What? At the end, they didn't show pictures of the real people. Oh, really? Yeah, no, they didn't, did they? No, they always do that because I always look forward to seeing what these people really look like. Yeah, I wonder if they do later on and we just turned it off too quickly. Hmm. I don't remember. I know I've seen pictures of what he looks like, mm-hmm. um, but I haven't seen pictures of what his like wife and kids and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, oh yeah. So if you, di- if we didn't say that, this is based on a real story um, of Jim Norris or Morris. Sorry. Um, and <laughs> while we we're watching the movie, I had said that this was um, very similar to, the Kurt Warner story, and you were like, what? And then I had to explain what the Kurt Warner story was, and it's essentially the same same thing. Um, he is a dried-up college quarterback, and he is working as a, uh, a stock boy in a uh, grocery store, and they find him and ask him to come play, and he ends up being Kurt Warner Super Bowl champion. <laughs> you know, you're just like, what? Mm-hmm. How does this happen? Well, Sometimes 
you just have to be at the right place at the right time. Like yeah. his time wasn't back then. It was now. And isn't that kind of um, a true story with, um, oh God, what is his name? Uh, Wahlberg. Um, he does a movie where he was a Philadelphia kicker, I think. Mm. You know, I, I don't watch movies on well, my own. I know. But I think that's also like a older guy makes it um, later in life. I have to look that up. But mm. yeah, I kind of like these real stories that uh, involve real people. Mm. Um, so one cool thing is that this really is filmed at the ballpark in Arlington. Mm-hmm. His first game really was at the ballpark. Mm-hmm. So everybody in his little town was able to come and watch him. Now, did they really in real life? We don't know. But in the movie, his whole town comes and I can, cheers him on. I, if it's not, if it's a regular game, first of all, us playing the Tampa Bay Rays, uh-huh. I could see that being a basic game. Yeah. And I can see you very easily getting tickets. Yes. You know, so For sure. it's believable. If you're not picky about where you're sitting, you could get tickets. Yeah. So. So they recorded half of it. Um at the real Rangers versus Tampa Bay game in 2001 when they were playing against each other. But this movie is set in 1999. So some of the players that were there actually playing in the game weren't even on the team in 1999. And so they couldn't really like show that. Mm -hmm. Um, So there's a scene where he finally comes out of the dugout to go or not to the dugout, the bullpen to come out and play and the coach comes to talk to him, and they're, like, doing a 360. And you can see empty, 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 empty <laughs> stands everywhere. And then all of a sudden, they fill it in with people. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, so that part's not real. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> clearly, they had people just come down. Because when they were panning around the stadium earlier in the game, you see people in all different sections of the ballpark. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden it's completely empty. And you're like, what? That was a scene. That was that was the re the re you know how they always come back and they're like, eh, yeah. we need to add one more scene. Yeah. That was an added scene. Well, they said everything with the with the actual game happening, mm-hmm. they filmed while the game was going on. Mm-hmm. But the extra scenes with him pitching and stuff, they filmed later. Mm. So that does make sense. But I was like, you did it where it didn't like it didn't look like it was part of the game. Mm-hmm. I was like, come on, guys, like step it up a little. Mm-hmm. Um, but I have watched a game before when they filmed a movie and it was real fun. Um, it was when they were filming for Fever Pitch mm-hmm. and we were playing Boston and they had um, Drew Barrymore and Jimmy Fallon in there and they kept having like reset. You could see when they would reset it back to the same scene again. And um, I, we were just sitting there and we're like, is that Jimmy Fallon and Drew Barrymore? What are they doing there? And they would explain why they were there. And in the movie, you could actually see that they're playing the Rangers and the Rangers beat them. And that was exciting. <laughs> so, yeah, I love that. I love that for us. <laughs> I don't, I can't think of any other movie except for, uh, my best friend's wedding. That's the only other movie that I know they at least show like a game from uh, against the Rangers, and the only other one maybe Moneyball, mm. uh, just because we're in their division. But I don't remember them actually showing and or talking about the Rangers. Mm. I pay attention when I watch those kind of movies just because I like to I like to know what's happening. Mm-hmm. Um. So is there anything else about this movie? I don't I don't like how the wife was kind of a bitch about it at first. Yeah. No wonder why they got... So this is sad. In real life, they got divorced within a year of him becoming mm-hmm. a major league player. Obviously, uh, she didn't like him being gone mm-hmm. and not being in Fort Worth because that's important. Mm-hmm. Um but in the movie, they're like a happy family at the end of the movie. What I don't like about her is that she just seems so fake. Like <laughs> she was perfectly happy living in her little box. Yeah. You know, and she only wanted her little box 
to get, you know, a window, yeah. you know, the Fort Worth. Like, she didn't have greater aspirations. She yeah. really honestly didn't. And then when he had this dream, she didn't want him to go. Yeah. But then she was like, I don't want to be the one who's blamed for you not following your dream. So fine, go do it. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm happy for you. This is what I want. You know? And then she sends him off and he's only getting paid like $600 a month, I think. Yeah. And of course, they're having money problems. And why would she, if you believe in him, why do you tell him about the money problems? Right? Like I would have sucked it up. I would have been borrowing. I would have been hustling. Yeah. I would not have told him until it got to the point. I was like, dude, there's nowhere else I can get money from. Yeah, you know? I would have gone and got a second job. I would have tried to. Yeah, like like I would not have told him until. I couldn't do it anymore Yeah, because her saying like, oh, I'm a Texas woman. I can handle shit. Well, then you don't need to tell him your problem because he's, he, are, you don't think he knows that there's not enough money. Right. Like, obviously you, you guys are a two income household. He knows how much both of y'all make yeah. and how much bills are. Okay. And so now he's at the point where like, oh my God, I'm going to quit, you know? I called Fort Worth. I told him I'm accepting. I'll come home for two weeks and then we'll move to Fort Worth. And she's like, well, I mean, you might as well just work the next two weeks. And then yeah. those two weeks is when he gets called, you know, to come down to the big town. Yeah. <laughs> big leagues. <laughs> yep. So good for him. But honestly, I just feel like she wasn't a good support for no. him. She no. was not. And they could have like sold their stuff. Mm-hmm. And moved in with the grandma or the grandpa. Yeah. They would have taken them in. Yeah. You know? Like, like I, I just feel like, you know what? He's not here. You know? Like, yeah. start... Like, like there were so many more options, you know, that she could... Like... <sighs> Plus, how was he only making $600? Like, you would think from all the different press things he was doing... Mm-hmm. He would have been making some extra money doing that. Like all these different Not stories. press, because like, you don't get paid for that. But like nowadays, you would at least get brand deals. Yeah, and like the, um, you know, the ESPN articles and the Bleacher Report and all that stuff. You would think he would get paid for some of that. But mm, maybe you would not. think. <laughs> maybe not in the 90s. That's more of like a nowadays thing, I guess. But either, even... Even then, when you get paid, it's more of a courtesy payment. Yeah. It's not a, you can live off of this. Like, I didn't find out until, you know, literally maybe 10, 15 years ago that when you go and do, like, the Tonight Show or the Late Late Show, they pay you yeah $1,000, which yeah. is a lot for us, but they're celebrities. $1,000 is like nothing. Right. You know, it's literally a courtesy. It's like a formality, mm-hmm. you know, like, okay, I'm paying you to show up, but it's literally like Trump change. Yeah. So. I would be so excited about that. <laughs> I know. So for these little articles, maybe a hundred bucks, 50 yeah. bucks. Like again, if that it's, it's just a courtesy yeah. for your time. Exactly. Um, I didn't like how angry the dad, his dad was, um, at him being mad about missing his baseball games and not being able to play and losing his glove. Like, here's my thing about the dad. I understand because of your job, you can't control where you're at. Yes. I understand if you're busy at work and can't show up yes. for your kids games. But there's no reason for you not to support your son and his passion. Yeah. You know, like when he lost his glove, he didn't give a fuck. It's like, that's all this kid has Yeah, is baseball. The least you can do is buy him some baseball magazines, some baseball cards, a new glove. Yeah. Like, you know, like you can't, you don't spend time with him at least provide him 
the ability to spend more of his time with his passions. Yeah. And, you know, it didn't sound like he was a he was bad at, at baseball. Like, it sounded like he was pretty good. Yeah. So it's like, why wouldn't you encourage him? Mm-hmm. Now, okay, if he was 20 and, and he was acting that way and you guys moved, that's one thing. But he was like 13, 14. Yeah. And this was every move. Like, obviously, yeah. the main move we're concentrating on was the last move. Yeah. But obviously, he'd been moving his whole childhood. You know, this last move where it stuck, he was a tween to yeah. teen, early teens, you know? Um, so. And then I also don't like how Dennis Quaid kind of got mad at his dad later on when his dad was actually trying. I feel like he was mad that it seemed like his dad finally gave a shit about his grandson and and what he was into, which was also baseball. And I think he was a little bit jealous because his dad was finally paying attention to the thing that his son loved, which is the same thing, or grandson, same thing as that his son loved. I honestly felt it was a perfectly normal reaction. Like, he bought him the wrong glove. Okay, whatever, I'll just get him the right one. Yeah. Like, I'm in that instance, you are trying to bond with my grandson. You are still not trying to bond with me over baseball. Mm. You know, I'm not going to spend my time explaining to you the difference between gloves. You bought him the wrong one. Fine. If he doesn't like it, I'll buy him the right one. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to waste my time talking to you about baseball. I've already wasted so many decades of my life. Yeah. So, no. I'm perfectly fine with that sentiment. Yeah. Why should I, why should I explain it to you? First of all, if I explain to you the differences of gloves, you're going to think I am still mad at you and belittling you or not explaining to you properly. Like I will not have the proper attitude to tell you nicely the differences of gloves. There's no way he could have that conversation with his father. And his father not be feeling bad about it. Mm. Think about it that way. You know, I, I found it really interesting that I didn't even know that there was a different... Like, I knew the catcher's glove was a little different than the rest of them. But I didn't know that a first baseman's glove was different than an outfielder's glove. I thought they had the same kind of glove. <laughs> so interesting. Didn't know that. <laughs> like, I knew because... I don't want to say I've played baseball, but you know, like in school, you try your hand at everything, yeah. obviously, because you're in school. And I did notice that some of them have fingers and one of them doesn't. Yeah. But see, I thought I, that was the catcher glove that I, didn't. But I didn't know enough about who's playing what for the difference. Yeah. Like, like I just thought, okay, this one doesn't have it. Pers- I, I don't know, personal preference. Like, I wasn't added to baseball yeah. to be like okay get a glove okay i got one this got one's a glove. this one's different whatever you know yeah like I, I i thought it was a catcher's glove that's the only one that didn't have hand fingers mm-hmm. holes in it mm-hmm. i didn't know that first base was different um but i did know that i always had to get it for the right hand and the coaches would be like no you have to put it on your left and i was like no i'm left-handed and they don't know what to do with you when you are not right-handed. I mean, your it, arm still team. works, right? Your fingers can still grab a ball, right? So yeah, like- but if you're not... So so um, usually first base is dedicated to people that are left-handed, especially if they're a good batter. Mm-hmm. That's usually where they put them. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if it really matters in the outfield... But it does kind of matter when you're on the in the um, the infield, mm-hmm. and so I it wasn't always a big deal when I was catching the ball, but when I was batting, I guess there wasn't enough kids that batted left handed, so they would always tell me I was on the wrong side of the the mound, and I'm like, or the plate, and I, I was like, but I'm left handed. I feel like. That doesn't happen much now, right? Probably not, but it it did when I was a kid. Like, I never understood the whole, like, making them right with the right hand thing. Like, why? You know, just 
But yeah. it's it's in your brain. Like it's how your brain is wired. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's really hard to unwire it. Like I just I never understood why teachers make a kid try to go against what's natural to them. Honestly, I think it's because they just don't know how to how to show you. Um, that's a main problem I've always run into. Uh, like when people are trying to show me how to catch a ball, how to um, how to stand with a bat or whatever, because they're trying to think, okay, this is how I do it this way. How are you going to do it that way? Um, golfing, same thing. Bowling, same thing. Uh, crocheting. My mom's a great crocheter. My mom was. Uh, she tried to show me. I couldn't. I couldn't figure it out. Cause I couldn't, she was like, well, just do what I'm doing. I was like, I can't do what you're doing because you're doing it from the other hand. But you can't see that and just mirror it backwards. You would think, but it was really difficult. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I think I could do like everything you're saying. It's like, just do it backwards. Just do it backwards. Like see what I'm doing. Use the opposite hands. Use the opposite. Yeah, you would think it'd be that easy, but it really isn't. Really? Yeah. I, I want you to show me some left-handed stuff. See if I could do it. <laughs> I think I could. I'm for real. We'll, we'll do an experiment. Okay. Okay. Because, uh, like, when I grip a bat, mm-hmm. I feel like doing it this way. Okay. But I think, like, I don't I don't know. I always did it wrong. However they wanted me to do it, I never did it correctly. I don't know why. I think I could do just fine both ways. Could be. Yeah. I don't know. Can you, you do you use both hands normally? Um, I've never really quite noticed. I know I'm right-handed. <laughs> but other than that, I don't really notice. My sister... Um, never really used her left hand at all. And it became quite clear when she broke her right arm and then all of a sudden had to live in a, in a left-handed world. Mm. And she realized all the shit that she cannot do with both hands. However, I live in a right-handed world and there's so much stuff that I do with my right hand, even though I'm left-handed. Mm-hmm. Um, mainly, the only thing I don't do with my right hand is write or eat Mm -hmm. everything else I pretty much can do with my right hand Mm -hmm. Uh, and I use mine interchangeably but she can't she cannot do it I feel like I I could do quite a bit with my left hand I'm gonna make tomorrow left hand day (laughs) okay I'm gonna tomorrow's gonna be left handed day I'm gonna see how much I could do all right okay try to cut some paper and uh, write some stuff Writing I've attempted before because the whole like, you know, if you want to write a like a ransom letter, use your left hand okay. so they can't like figure out it's you. But what I need you to do is try it in different kind of ways. So I for sure cannot do cursive. Oh, no, no, no. That's not what I mean. You Okay. So great example today. So I went to um, my, my poor grandma. She had been at my dad's house about... Mm, at two and a half days Mm -hmm. and somehow she fell and broke both shoulders or fractured both shoulders. So I went to the rehab center to go see her today. And when I went to go sign in, they had a three ring binder and right where I needed to sign in was the giant middle ring. Mm -hmm. And it was very difficult for me to write my name because I couldn't fit my hand in there. Mm -hmm. Um, no, I probably could have tried to use my right hand, but I just typically don't try to do that. So I just wrote really small and and was able to do it. So I need you to get a three ring binder. Try to write with your right hand, right where those rings are or your left hand. Um, get a spiral notebook. Try to write on it with your left hand. Um, oh, it's not going to be legible at all. Yeah, it's, it's well, really I mean, hard. Very slowly. Yeah, and um, scissors. Try to cut anything with normal scissors with your left hand. Okay. It's very difficult. I will try. That's easy. I could try that right now when I get home. Yeah, you have to turn them over usually. 
to get we'll him to see. work. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. I'm going to draw a straight line. And I'm going to try to cut it. Okay. I like to see that happen. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, ooh, try to use a mouse with your left hand. Uh, I don't think that counts. You don't even do that. I don't because <laughs> it's stupid. It's stupid to try to do that because I live in a right-handed world. So even if I tried and did it with my left hand, every I, place I go, I would have to. I will say, though, I do use my thumb sometimes. Oh. So like, you know, like control, alt, delete, and then I use the thumb. But it has to be the mouse like on a laptop. Yeah. You know, so like I do use my thumb sometimes. Well, good job. Thank you. I I was a bowler, and um, I was okay. I wasn't super great. And then one day, my coach was like, you're left-handed. And I was like, yeah. He's like, is your ball left uh, done for a lefty? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> They're like, well, we should go get your ball drilled for a lefty. They did that. I got like 50 points better <laughs> immediately. Wait, wait, wait. This was your personal ball? Yeah. So did it have double holes or an extra hole or how does that work? So they work? can plug them uh, okay. and just redrill it somewhere else. Okay. Um, I think I think they finally got me like a different ball and they use that ball to mm-hmm. drill it. But yeah, they can plug them. Oh, okay. Um, I had a red ball and it was sparkly mm. and it was my favorite. And uh, that became my um, straight ball because it didn't really have a curve or anything. So I would just use that when I'd have like um, like one pin left up there or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I got way better after <laughs> after they were like, oh, it matters if it's drilled for your hand or not. <laughs> huh, maybe we should we should do that with all the balls. So yeah, sometimes it matters. Cool. The kid in this movie had to learn how to throw the ball left-handed because he is not left-handed. Mm. Uh, when they were showing Dennis Quaid as a child. Because mm. uh, he's a southpaw. Okay. Okay, let's see here. So, I don't think there's anything else about this movie. Is there anything else you have about this movie? Mm-hmm. So far, Jay I does. feel like... It was a very 90s movie. Like, like it didn't pull at my heartstrings. <laughs> you know, if this movie were made today, it would be so much more riveting and emotional, and I would be so much more invested. You know what I'm actually surprised about is how quickly they made the movie because the events happened in 1999. This movie came out or was, um, yeah, it came out in 2002. Mm. So it's very strange that it, that quick of a turnaround that they got a script written Mm. and filmed and everything with such a small amount of time. You know, when you think about it, he actually did good to get divorced that first year. He didn't have, (laughs) he didn't lose so much. (laughs) True. You know, when you hit it big, just get that divorce out of the way quickly. Well, I mean, he only played for two years and he was a reliever. He probably didn't get that much money. Mm. Got some money, but mm. not a ton of money. She probably living out here in Fort Worth somewhere. Yeah. I mean, that, that was her goal was to live in Fort Worth. And she probably is. You know, we should look her up. I don't yes. care about him. Let's just look yeah. up the wife. <laughs> See, where's she at? Mm-hmm. What's she doing? Yep. What's Hunter doing? <laughs> Hunter Morris, if that's even his real name. Um, so if you had to rate this movie, what would you rate it? Mm. I can tell you loved it so much. <laughs> Honestly, it wasn't that like the story was good. Uh-huh. It just wasn't told interestingly enough for yeah. me. So I would give it a four and I wouldn't watch it again oh. out of 10. Why did you give that baseball to your dad? You should have given it to your son. <laughs> he was literally there with you 
every step of the way and he would appreciate that ball more. True. But I think he wanted to show his dad that he could make it. That little piece of that little boy that wanted his dad's affection, it wanted his dad to have it. No, if your dad still doesn't believe and trust in you. Maybe it was a peace offering. No. That was too much. <laughs> when your kid has, your kid has literally done more for your baseball dream than your father has ever done. Sure. Like he watched his two little sisters not get kidnapped while you're <laughs> auditioning. He shows up and helps you give uh, pep talks to the team. He watches you and your team play, you know, like, like, no, like his son has literally done more for him in his baseball dream. And let's just face it. You love the kid. I do. <laughs> I do. I love Jake. I love Jake from two and a half men. You know, he was the, at the time was the highest rated child actor. Yeah. The highest paid child actor. Which is weird because I would have thought it would have been Haley Joel Osment. And he, no, like, I guess TV or oh, whatever okay, at the yeah. time. Um, or Dakota I'm Fanny. sure he's accumulated more also because TV, you get a regular paycheck for how many years? Like, and I think after what happened to Charlie Sheen, he only did one more season and then he bowed out. So. Yeah, he just wanted to be a kid and smoke pot and stuff. It's a true story. Well, good for him. <laughs> he got that money and ran. Yeah. Um, I don't hate it as much as you do. Mm. Uh, so I'd give it a six out of ten. Uh, it's definitely up for a remake and it would be owls. better. Oh, yeah. owls. <laughs> I don't know why I said owls, but yeah. Like uh, it, it has all of the ingredients to be a great movie. I think the problem was is that they focused too much on his life before he did, before he became like, okay, Honestly, we didn't he see- didn't suffer. He didn't suffer. You know, we didn't show the down and out. Yeah. We didn't see the surgeries and stuff like they needed to have more of like his college mm-hmm. time so we can see what happened. Yeah. Um, and then have a little less of his time when he's a teacher and yeah. then have where they make the bet and all that. Yeah. Cause like we didn't see, we had at no point did I connect with him because yeah. there was no struggle. Yeah. You know, he just had missed opportunities mm-hmm. and he had no struggle. Like he literally, his team, they won. Yeah. They lost one game, you know, just for the pep talk. Yeah. And then they won like 17 in a row or some crap. Yeah. And then he goes and like, you can tell they made him wait all day, but they could have done a better passage of time. Yeah. Like maybe him looking like eager, like when will they call me? You know, like there's more. Yeah. Like, Suffering. Like, yeah, they could have made if they were redone now, they could do it so much better. Probably. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. Well, if you have your ideas of how the rookie could be better in 2024, you can find us at Two Chicks Talk and Flicks on all platforms. And until next time, toodles. Bye. This episode was produced by Two Chicks Talk and Flicks. Music was produced by Michael Giervani. If you like this episode, please like and subscribe. If you'd like to be a part of the show, have a movie suggestion, or just want to give us some love, you can email us at twochickstalkingflicks at gmail.com. Thanks, guys. Toodles.